Hey, Patreon, this is Travis. Thank you for stopping by to watch. So I want to talk to you today about plants, um, wild foraging for food and for medicine. And the reason is, is because, well, summer is starting to wind down. I understand that some of you live further south and you're probably like, man, we still got like three months left of summer. <laughs> um, but the point is, is that the, in the plant world, uh, things are, it's a, it's a the season is about to start changing for them. And they're, the flowers have turned into seed. Um, some plants are already starting to wither away. Uh, it's usually a dry spell in most of the country right now. I understand places have been getting rain because of storms and stuff. But generally speaking, um, it, it's, it's the drier time of the year. So plants start to look differently. And here's the deal that I'm the point that I'm getting at. Uh, when you are learning to identify plants and, and, and know how to use them, whether it's for food or for medicine, you need to know how to, use, how to identify them throughout the year. Um, it's easy to identify plants in the springtime a lot of times because that's when they're in their fullest, they're green, their, their flowers are starting to bloom or whatever that is that, that you're identifying. And so it, it's kind of easy, but um, you know, can you do it when they start changing? Uh, can you do it? I'm trying to find it. I'm going to get it right here. Hold on a second. Give me an example. Does anyone know what this is? I don't know if it'll focus real good. Sometimes my phone has a little problem. Okay. It's obviously dying out. This is Queen Anne's Lace. And, um,. In its in its green lush form, it is edible. It's one of those ones that it can look like a poisonous like hemlock, so you have to be a little careful with it. But the point that I'm making is, is it obviously looks very different. Um, there's not much use of it in in this stage, but there there are seeds, and if you, you know, if you like Queen Anne's lace, you could plant the seeds, but it does a pretty good job on its own of reseeding itself because it grows everywhere. It was just an example. The point is, is that you need to get out there in each season and try to identify the plants that you that you're, you're trying to learn. Um, this is important from a preparedness standpoint. So for those of you, that's more of your focus, because a lot of you that are that are getting more into you know edible food, wild foraging, and medicinal foraging. Uh, you, you, part of your plan is, is like, uh, you know, and this is mine, this is mine, you know, if I have to bug out or if I have to get home, um, it, you know, if I'm stranded somewhere, if I'm out in my vehicle, you know, in town and an EMP happens and I, you know, I'm stranded there and I got to walk home, part of my plan to keep me alive um, in walking home is to, to find things along the way to eat. Um, well, I need to know what they look like at different times of the year. Dandelion looks different when it's in full bloom as to when it loses its bloom and it's just the, 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 the plant, the leaves. Um, it, things kind of start to change. Uh, for instance, and I should have grabbed some, but we've got some on the property in a different place. Um, uh, Jerusalem artichoke. Uh, it is a, it's a very good edible. Uh, if you've ever had it, the, the root is, is kind of similar to a potato. Um, not exactly, but it, it, it's a good potato substitute. Um, <clears throat> it's easy to identify when it's in full bloom. It looks like a miniature sunflower because, well, it's related to the sunflower. It's kind of the, the flower is, you know, yay big around and it's kind of a cross between a dandelion and sunflower and all of those would sit dandelions and sunflowers and uh, Jerusalem artichoke are all in the same family. But typically when you're out harvesting it for the root, for the most part, I mean, you can harvest it in the spring, uh, but it's usually after the uh, flower falls off. So can you identify it then? Can you identify it by just its leaves? Um, so what I advise is that in each season, as the plants start to change their appearance because of whatever's going on, is to get out and try to identify them. The same plants that you've identified that you've been working on identifying in the spring come out towards the end of the summer, which is now, and see if you can still identify those plants because they're gonna look different. They've grown all summer. Um, 
plants start to some plants get woody and and even the leaves can take on a different shape towards the end of their life cycle seasonal cycle um, like I said they can lose their fl flowers um, maybe they just have seed pods instead of flowers so you need to need to work on identifying that and there's another reason why it's important uh, in, in each season and to learn your plants is to learn uh, how a plant works and, and and this is more for the medicinal side with the edible if a plant is edible it's usually edible all the time there are exceptions to that rule one for instance is poke pokeweed um, it's 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 edible you have to prepare it a certain way but it is edible in the early spring before the stems start to turn red uh, but then after that you really it's too much too toxic you don't want to eat it after that that's those are there are exceptions but generally for instance like dandelion uh, it's edible any time of the year and any stage of its growth it's edible um, but for medicinal it's a little different with medicinal it's it's the same you know it's it's still medicinal but you need to know what part uh, to harvest that time of the year and for what you're doing or what you're needing it for and what I mean by this I think I'm being a little confusing because I'm starting to get confused um, in the springtime when a plant is um, is starting to to grow it puts all of its energy all of the nutrition that it that it soaks in the sun the water everything that it soaks in it's putting it all into that flower uh, in fact a lot of plants I keep using dandelion as an example if you pick a dandelion of the flower itself it'll grow another one and it'll just keep growing them and then as it goes through that cycle that flower in most plants I know I'm generalizing turns into a seed pod some kind of seeds the reason and, and through that whole cycle that period of, of its life it is throwing all of its energy in fact some of them you can even pick the leaves almost bare and they will still keep growing because they're they're throwing all of their energy into the flower that will be, eventually become a seed pod and because that's that's it's you know it's spreading its seed it's it's a baby and so it's kind of like a human where uh, a, a mother's body is designed and created to protect that infant inside even if it means you know hurting the the, the mother's body and so it's the same way with the seeds they, they throw all of their energy into that so if you're harvesting during that time period medicinally the strongest amounts of nutrition and medicine are typically going to be in the flower area of the of the plant um, and not so much in the root because it's soaking up everything and putting it into that flower so that it can turn that flower into seeds so that it can spread its seeds and and, and keep growing you know it's um, you know continuing life now that actually flips around and reverses when it comes to starting about this time of the year and it really depends on the region that you're at we're, we're just I'm just starting to see it here because there are things like I just showed you the Queen Anne's Lace that's going to seed uh, so from now for the next 30 or 40 days uh, around here we're going to start seeing I got a sweat bee driving me nuts sorry um, it's the plants are going to start withering down, going to seed, uh, losing leaves more. And it's the same way with trees. Uh, when, when your trees are losing their leaves, what they're doing, it's not so much that the leaves uh, themselves are dying. It's that the tree is sucking all the nutrition out of the leaves. Okay. Uh, the tree for, for the whole year, it's put all of its energy into putting the leaves out so that it can reproduce itself in whatever way the tree does and that it can grow and it can soak up all the sunlight all the moisture all that kind of stuff and then as we start to head into fall the tree trunk the roots the you know down below start sucking all the energy out of those leaves which cause them to turn red orange and brown and all that kind of stuff and die the, the leaves themselves die and it pulls all that energy back down into its trunk and down into the roots and it stores it so that the tree can survive the winter and plants will do the same thing so it's sucking all that energy you know it's, it's put out all the energy that it can into the seed and now that the seed is is done and it's on its own at that point and then every bit of energy left in that plant 
is being sucked down into the roots so that it can have a chance of surviving the winter. So what does that mean? That means if you're starting to collect in the fall and the winter time, especially medicinally, your odds are you're gonna have a higher concentration of, um, of the medicine that you're trying to get out of the plant in the root versus the flower in the springtime. This, this again is a general rule. There are exceptions to that. Um, there are different, and I'm, I'm just thinking of, of exceptions. Uh, echinacea, most of you that know about plant medicine, you know about echinacea, and it's, it's a good, um, uh, you know, builds up your immune system. It's, a, it's an immune boosting uh, uh, plant. There are different types of echinacea plants, flowers. Uh, and there is one in particular that even when the flower is nicely blooming and everything, the root is actually the source of the strongest medicine. And there's a separate variety of echinacea, and it's just the opposite that the flower is always the source of the strongest medicine. So there are exceptions to that, which is why, you know, you should have a decent book uh, and, and do the research to figure out. But what I'm talking about today is the general rule, a general rule that in the fall and the winter time, the plant sucks all of its energy down into the roots. And so that's where the concentration of medicine is gonna be the most versus the springtime where it's putting all of its energy into the flower so that it can eventually produce seeds. And that's where the concentration of its energy and medicine is going to be. So there's two things there, you know, that we learned today. Um, work on identifying plants at each cycle of its life, of growth in its life cycle. Uh, that way you have a better chance of, of identifying it regardless of what time of the year it is. Because if, you know, if you're out, like I said earlier, and something happens and you're stuck away from the house and you've got to get home or you've got to bug out or whatever it is, and part of your plan is I will eat, you know, what's out there. I've identified several, you know, plants in my area. I know them well. And so if I have to leave, part of how I'm going to feed myself is by what grows and you only know how to identify them in the spring and you have to go bugging out in the September or October or something like that. Do you know how to identify them then? Or maybe some of those spring plants are already gone and you need, and there's plants now that are the ones. So you need to, I know not just, you know, five or six plants, you need to know different plants for different times of the year. And same way with winter time. Uh, you know, what are some things in the winter time that you could eat uh, to keep you alive in your region. And it's different for every region. So it, there is a level of complication there. Um, but the point is, is that we're in a beginning stages. We're gonna start heading into a season change soon. And so I wanted to get that out there for those of you that are learning plant medicine and uh, wild foraging, because you, it's important to know the plants at its different life cycle changes. All right, folks, thank you for watching. Catch you in the next video.